through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I misplaced my last um, sheet of my mystery, so I had to grab another until I can find it. Um, oh. For me today, it's interesting, sorrowful mysteries. Um, I've been, you know, really sad about something, you know, about it. And um, so when we came to the first mystery, um, this picture, which we talk about a lot, but it's just so powerful. I just am thinking of the person that I feel sad for and hope that their guardian angel is comforting them and holding them and telling them there's a brighter day ahead because a lot of people are locked in depression and rage and um, fear, <coughs> persecution, um, and they depend on their family to be there for them and to hold them, to give them that comfort. And um, there's nothing more comforting than a mother. And there's nobody that suffers as much with you than your mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not a person who likes to hug a lot. I'm not a very, you know, uh, my, it's so funny because my mom said when I was a kid, I was very affectionate. I'm not like that. And um, I have to remind myself um, sometimes to be affectionate when another person needs it. Now, sometimes um, I just, sometimes I get around my kids and I'm like, oh, I need to hug them, especially my big boys, you know. Um, and my little girl, she comes to me and she just tucks herself in me. And um, it's a, it's the hug of your children, the hug of your mother. I remember when my mom was dying, I knew it would be the last time and I held her hand. I actually have pictures of her hand and mine wrapped in a rosary. And I said, this is what will keep us chained through eternity is that rosary. And it has, um, that was 2015. And then the, ne the next year, I guess it was, is when you and I started was just one year later. Um, and I remember taking my mom's arm and putting it around me. And I said, she might not be here because by then the morphine, you know, we, I wanted her to go in comfort, you know, because she suffered so much with her breathing. And um, the, that helped her with, you know, not to suffer at the end. And so my mom had done so much suffering in her life. She had a lot of pain. And um, so I wrapped her arm around me and um, just held it there. And I thought, this is the last hug I'll have of my mother because there's just nothing like a mother's touch that heals a person. Um, before my mother was very much into her faith, she went through a lot of the new age and she did Reiki and those kind of things, which can bring some evil to them. So you have to be careful with that. You know, I don't believe in that today. I believe it's real, but I believe that it comes from the wrong sources. So I would never engage in that. Um, but my mother was a very kinesthetic person, um, which my daughter is, uh, which I'm not, you know. So um, I just remember her hug. It's yeah. just like a wow. hug that you, your mother's hug is a hug you will never forget. And it's so important when you need healing because there's nothing like, my mother was a very healing person because she suffered so much. Because when people have suffered, they learn about healing. My mother, that's all she did in her time was to find healing modalities. And that's how she ended up with Reiki. And that's how things can lead us to the wrong places. Um, some mm -hmm. people put it in their, in their politics or whatever. They think that will solve the world. There's only one thing that can solve the world, and that is Jesus. There's only one thing that will, that will, will heal us fully. Yes, maybe some of those modalities can help us, you know, Reiki or those politics that you think, oh, that will heal the world's problems. But healing is in our suffering and that's the most amazing part of Christ's suffering and why as Catholics 
we don't shy away from that suffering. We embrace it because in the suffering is healing. And that's why Jesus did what he did for us. He, he did this for us. When you love someone, you sacrifice for them. And when you see someone suffering for you, and when you see a mother suffering with her child, it hurts your heart. I remember when my, my brother was in his coma, to see my mother by his side just was just so mm. hard. And um, she got the Piata not long after that. And she wanted to give that to my, um, my niece, who was the daughter of my brother who was in the coma, because they both, that was her father. She was just a little girl. And her mother, uh, or her mother had already died. So he was her last parent. So they both suffered so much with my brother. But my mother, being the kinesthetic person she was, she was by his side every moment, every day. She helped him learn to breathe again without the machine. She helped wow. him to walk again. There is nothing like a mother holding your hand yes. when you're suffering and when you're in depression and getting you that help that you need. Because sometimes um, we need a little direction from the psychologist. That's why in here, we pray for psychiatrists, psychologists, and counselors. We hope that they can draw on God to help that they can guide people to maybe get them the right medication, to maybe get them the right um, uh, um, re, re, um, what do they call that? Reframing of your problem and to yes. learn to see in your suffering where you can grow. Because every challenge in life is a challenge that helps us grow as a person and for the future, for our next, you know, for our next situation or our next relationship. We learn from every painful um, interaction we have from another person. Even if, even if we don't continue relationship with that person, we learn for the next time. We learn and say, well, what, where could I have done things differently? And even if they've been wrong, because there's nobody that's perfect in any relationship, you know, they're both, uh, we both, we all do things that are wrong in relationships. We just have to keep trying. And sometimes it's necessarily, it's necessary to, um, to, uh, to go to the, to, to know when it's time to move on and and to find the next um the next challenge in life and that's what we have to do and we have to be courageous to do that it takes a lot of courage um especially when you love somebody you know when you care so deeply for someone it takes a lot yeah. of courage to say you know i need to move on um so that all came to me today and um when when we got to the fourth and um and and that's where this picture with um, Jesus's face, he's scared and he's, he knows what's coming. Like there's no one that knew what was coming like he does. And, um, and there's no one that suffered as much as his mother who suffered with him. So I just want to send all my love to every mother out there that is standing by her child's side and suffering with them. So that's what came to me today. So how about you? What did you get? Um, yeah, I kind of stayed with the fourth sorrowful, the carrying of the cross, um, where it says uh, Veronica wipes his face, leaving on her towel the edge of his continence. Um, I think of this picture. Yes. Yeah, right, the picture of Jesus right wait here. Wait till you find out what I just done. What I've just done. I, I can't wait to share. It. Oh, I. I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking the countenance of Jesus on her towel. You know, those little miracles, those little things that are along our way, along our life, that that come to us, and sometimes we overlook them because we're so busy with whatever we're doing, and we don't stop to help someone we don't stop to you know bless someone by helping them we get blessed because we 
get the blessing from helping. Yeah. Sometimes it's important to allow people to help you. A lot of time we're prideful. I know I am at times. People want to help me. And I'm sure. like, no, no, no. I never want to bother anybody. That's the thing. It's not necessarily that you don't want the help. It's just that you don't want to bother someone. I don't want to bother people because I know they're busy. I know they have their own things. I know, But by not allowing somebody to help you when they can and they're offering, you're preventing them from getting that blessing from God. And you're preventing them from right. doing what God wants them to do, which is loving their neighbors because they're loving their neighbors through you. Yeah. Allowing love. Yes you and to help you so that's very important to um remember that when he fell and then uh simon went and um helped him carry the cross so many times we help our people carry their crosses and you know people we love we help them carry their crosses and that's so important to accept it and to allow them to help you also yeah. when you when you also need somebody to help you carry your cross and um you know you see jesus and his and his humility and his love and his just acceptance it, it, it takes humility to do those but all of those things you're talking yeah about, you're right yeah it does take humility. humiliation is difficult to endure especially when we are in the right jesus lived what he taught about the last being first when we are treated unfairly, we need to discern the prudent response. Sometimes we need to set our boundaries and stand for what is right. Other times we need to turn the other cheek and suffer in silence. In all times, we need to follow the counsel of St. Peter. Yeah. Cast all your worries upon him because he cares for you. Yeah. Um, Mother Teresa, today I shared in my reading um, um, this one book that's called The Heart of Joy, it's by Mother Teresa. You you put the book up, I saw. Um, she, she has a whole list of things that we need to do daily. <laughs> daily to be able to be more humble. And I seek that. I seek to oh, be more Oh, and I found it in the video. I found it in the video you sent me. I put an image of that up. To oh, you. see it? Okay. Because yeah, yeah, I, I had to I had to put that book up because the book that was in the video, you can't get it. It's like a hundred and twenty five to five hundred dollars. So that's oh, really? why, yeah, that's why I found that other book that you just mentioned. The heart, what was it? The oh. heart. It's the heart of joy. Yeah, that's why I had to find that book because the other one. Yeah, he has a list, and I wrote down the list. Um, the main one is God needs our poverty, not our yeah. not our abundance. Yeah. The poverty. That's why in the reading where you read about the widow giving those two cents, you know, those two coins that she gave, she gave and she suffered giving that coin. That was all she had. It was a, it's a, when we, when we when we love out of sacrifice, that yes. that is yes. true love. Who sacrificed more than anybody? When we sacrifice money, when we sacrifice our our um, when we sacrifice our ego, when we die to yeah. self and our ego, that sacrifice is is giving love, like you know. Yes, yes, and there's a lot of other things which I will plan to definitely read them daily and try to incorporate them in my life even if we do a little bit it doesn't have to be all those right. things up. well you can't do all those things all at once but but i um, did put a graphic up of it if you if you if you didn't see of the list? yeah the one that came from the video you sent oh i took a screen grab it. Hey, yeah i'm gonna share that then yeah. yes yes there's read them guys because there's it's amazing all these things that we need to do to be a little more humble well and to, but the video my but the video you sent me it it just reading them is not enough. The priest that you sent me, he describes, because yes. some people, you can misunderstand some things like poverty of spirit. That's not common knowledge, you know, common uh, expression today. So when you hear the priest of the video you sent me, he explains it. That's an amazing video you sent me. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I Yeah. We, we both posted it, guys. We posted it on oh. our timeline. 
So you can take a look at that if you'd like to get more on that list. Um, Jesus delivers us from sin so that we are free to be like him. We are free to look out for someone else's needs before our own. We are free to sacrifice on someone else's behalf. The more this happens, the more like Jesus we become. It will look different from each one of us. A, a, con contemplative, a contemplated monk grows in loving in a different way than a young father does. A corporate executive conforms herself to Christ differently than someone living in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. But for each of us, true freedom comes as we receive the grace to live up to our potential. Mm -hmm. Remember, loving isn't accomplished in a single moment or gesture. It happens over time and with practice. Mm -hmm. Just as every rehearsal enables the flute player to play even more beautifully. Father, thank you for setting me free to live in a way that pleases you. Amen. Yeah. And, and yeah. yeah, and it's funny because um, you, you mentioned, um, you were about to mention pride when I interrupted you. And I, I think about, and then you said rehearsals. When you think about it, every relationship is a rehearsal on the way to the perfect one. At, so, at that moment, you think, oh, this one's perfect. Oh, you know, and you don't yeah. trust, you don't trust that God is going to bring you the perfect one. You, you yeah. think that that rehearsal is the perfect one. But, but when I look at, when I look at another person, it's easy for me to see that's been maybe through three or four relationships. And now they were, they were all missing just a little something. And then when they find the perfect one, it's like, oh, finally, this eclipses all the others. So that's what came to me when you had mentioned pride and then you mentioned um, the rehearsals. But I want to share something when you were talking about the face of Jesus. I've been seeing it behind you because remember, I used to have it on my oh, room. Yeah. I would do it in my room. Right. And I moved out here at my desk. But um I missed it and I was like, okay, so I put it here. I took it off my fridge and put it here. But then I was like, I want to see it in my background. I can't see it in my background. Like Jeanette has it in her background. And I was like, gosh, I really want to see that. What can I do? Could I hang something? I was thinking. And then I found something that oh, you good. Yes, but you can it was a little expensive. It was eighty nine dollars. But um anyway, what I did was it's a retractable because I don't have a lot of space. I'm in a little tiny condo, you know. So I took the image. Let me show you the image that I took. And I um I put the real face in the divine mercy, and it's going to be about six. I had to play with it a lot, and I kept the face um, illuminated. Oh, um, that's beautiful, Hen. Oh, that's beautiful, I know, Hen and I did it with, um, I think it was GIMP. I used a couple different programs to do it, and it's going to be like six feet tall. So, oh, that's yeah, yes. I ordered it, and I'm waiting for it to be shipped. So I'm excited Love about it, it. and uh, it, oh. is, it is $89, but... I thought it'll be nice because it. it's retractable. Yeah. yeah, it's retractable, and um, I can uh, I can do it. Um, you know, I can I can put it away each day um, where it won't be in the way. Um, and then when we do Divine Mercy, it'll already be there in Divine Mercy. So yeah, so you know these Great. things, these images and things, they're just something that help us. Human beings like symbols. We like um, we're very visual beings. Yes, and and we depend on those to help us. Like this picture, seeing this mother, you know, these things, um, this rosary, um, all of the problems that I put on here, and all of the answers it has given me. All of the yeah. an I told you I had a prayer answered a couple of days ago. Um, it actually has been in the process um, uh, for someone that I love that um, uh, that is um, happy now in a way that they weren't. And um, you know, it's hard when you're standing by and you're watching someone suffer. And when you when they finally find um, yeah. what's right for them, you know, um, it's my weapon, and it answers prayers. It's 
I don't Amen. like I don't like to say it's magical, but it is magical. It is magical. And um and it's hard because at the same time you uh you know when you have a couple of kids, when you have a bunch of kids magic, it's different. No, it is, it is different. I said I like to say that, but it's not. But when you have a bunch of kids, one child will be going through something happy and another child will be going through something sad. And it's so hard because it's like the roller coaster, you know, because you and there's an old saying that you're only um, you're only as happy as your most miserable child, because if you have three or four kids like we do, your most miserable child is where you're sad, you know, you you feel sad and it's hard when your other ones are having happy moments, you know. And so you, it's, you've got to, you got to go with it and you just have to trust God that everything that everyone is going through is, um, is necessary Amen. for us to get closer to Christ because that's what this is all about. We're here on a test to have eternal life. So. Yeah. Amen. So may the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly and give you peace and love and just contentment and help and humility. Humility, yeah. To be more and more like Christ every day and to soften your hearts, to be able to accept what this world is going to throw at us in a humble, loving way. Yes. Jesus did and Mother Teresa did yes. also. Yes protection out there amen. amen thank you for sending me that video uh it was it was a beautiful thing i i intend to um get that book so. oh yeah that looks like a, i read her other one that you um sent me that you sent me to listen to and i forgot the name of it a little little flower or something like no not little no, flower no. yeah it was i forgot it was from mother Teresa, and it was her her like diary and yeah her life yeah um and everything she went through you know those sisters weren't that kind to her no i was surprised yeah to see how those sisters were so jealous and 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 how they acted toward her yeah. and how she took it yeah. and how she she gave it to jesus by by writing a diary by speaking to him about her sadness Instead of letting it unleashed on these people, she be my, be my light. Be my light. Isn't that the one? Be my light. I think so. It's yeah. the one you said a that's, few months ago. That's her. But that's her uh, diary. And and she. Oh, it was so beautiful. And she didn't have consolation, which is what no. they say we should be working toward. <laughs> which surprised me. I never knew that. So she she did she she couldn't. She didn't feel God's consolation, but um, she still did everything right. And yeah. that is the most amazing part. Even when we can't feel God's presence, we still do what his will. And that's not always easy to do, right? Yes, it's not. It's not. Especially in this world we live in that we have all these people, um, you know, hitting us from all over the place. We that's just why this book is my Bible, literally. And then I use this book because it is teaching. It's the Bible for young Catholics. And it goes through each book of the Bible and talks about all the lessons. Because sometimes- I love- Yeah, because sometimes the Bible lessons can be confusing. And because the language was different then and, and life was different, the culture was different. So it's really sometimes hard to understand what they're talking about. And that's why whenever I'm reading this, I have this right next to me and I read it at the same time because it gives, it helps me to have insight when I look at the two of them side by side, it gives me insight and they each do uh, focus a little bit differently. So, but anyway, we, we have all the instructions here. This is, we do. this is it. it. We have every lesson we need to learn in life here. It's just studying it. Life is hard and studying for it is even harder because we're on a test for eternal life. 
and we have to get through with our neighbors. We're in it together. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We love you guys, and we'll see you later on today for more prayer. Bye-bye.